Okay, hold on. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's so small. We're here in Big Bear, California for the weekend. It's a small town up in the mountains, just a couple hours outside of LA. And I really love it here. I've spent a ton of time here as a kid. But I want to start this episode off by talking about something that changed with the most recent game update that you may or may not have noticed. If you're like me and you battle gyms a lot, you've probably noticed that since the last update, battles feel a little bit different. Niantic made a small change to the battle system that actually has a really big impact on the way you should play the game. They've added something called buffering to the battle system, and if you've never played a fighting game or any kind of action battle game, let me explain what buffering is. Before the most recent update, you would have to wait until a Pokemon finished performing its current action before you could input a command for a new action, meaning if the Pokemon was already attacking, you would have to wait until that attack animation finished and then you could put in a command for a new action, an attack or a dodge. With that system, if you wanted to attack as fast as possible, you would have to try to input your next attack command immediately after the Pokemon's attack animation finished. And oftentimes that makes people resort to button mashing, just tapping the screen as fast as possible, hoping that one of those taps hits as soon as the previous attack ends. Now, with buffering, you can input a command while a Pokemon is performing an action, and immediately after that action ends, it will perform the new action that you input the command for. So if you input an attack command while the Pokemon is still attacking, immediately after that attack ends, it'll attack again. If you input a dodge command while the Pokemon is still attacking, immediately after that attack ends, it'll dodge. Buffering effectively eliminates button mashing as the optimum strategy for battling. Now you have to be careful with your inputs and make sure you time them, because if you've been button mashing since the update, you've probably noticed that you get stuck in your attack animations and you can't dodge attacks when you want to. If you spam attacks by tapping the screen as fast as possible, you often won't be able to dodge because by the time you see the warning flash and you try to input that dodge command, you've already tapped the screen too many times and you've input an attack command, so the Pokemon will start attacking immediately after the current attack ends and you're not able to dodge. With the new system, you only want to tap the screen once for each time you want to attack. So you'll tap the screen to attack and near the end of that attack animation, tap the screen if you want to attack again. Now if you know an enemy attack is coming soon, don't tap the screen to attack again, wait for that warning flash and then input your dodge command. If you tap the screen to attack when you know an enemy attack is coming, you'll get locked into an attack animation and you won't be able to dodge. And if you see that warning flash while your Pokemon is still attacking, you can input a dodge command and if the attack ends soon enough, it'll dodge immediately after and you'll still avoid the damage. Buffering works for charge attacks too, so you can actually press and hold on the screen while your Pokemon is still attacking and it'll start charging that charge attack so that as soon as the attack animation ends, you'll unleash the charge attack. You can also buffer commands before the battle even starts, so if you input an attack command while you see that go text on your screen, as soon as you're able to, the Pokemon will attack, and if you have a fast attack animation, you can actually get an attack in before the defending Pokemon starts to use its own attacks. This works at the very beginning of a battle, and also after you've defeated a Pokemon before the next Pokemon gets sent out. So again, with this buffering update, you don't want to tap the screen as fast as possible when you're battling anymore. You want to be very precise with your inputs and only tap the screen one time for each attack you want to perform. Because if you tap too fast and input an extra command, you're going to have a bad time. Now as for why Niantic made this buffering change, for one thing, I think it helps with a little bit of server delay because if you're able to input commands ahead of time, the game can send that command to the server and then send back the response before the attack animation ends and that way you lose a little bit of lag time between attacks. And also, it just makes the battle system a little bit better. It feels a little bit more advanced so that you're not just spamming attacks as fast as possible. So overall, I'm pretty happy with it. It's a good change in my opinion. It might take a little while to get used to. So as you watch through this episode, you'll notice at the beginning I didn't know it was changed and I thought it was lag at first, but as I go through the day, you'll see that by the end of the day I finally realized what was going on and I adapted to it pretty quickly and you should be able to too. So here you go, day one of the Big Bear Adventure. Enjoy.
just a quick stop to enjoy the views. Um, there's no Pokemon on my nearby list, but I'm not sure we're far enough from any spawn points to get anything interesting with incense. There's some houses over there. You know, so we're not too far from civilization right now, but I'm gonna throw an incense on and if something interesting shows up in the first couple spawns, maybe I'll stay here for the whole 30 minutes. If not, we'll just get back on the road and keep moving. Clefairy. That's interesting. Clefairy, as I've said before in the original Pokemon games, can be found in Mount Moon. So I've noticed that I generally find Clefairies on mountains or mountainous areas or in hills. And someone on Reddit actually did a whole analysis of Clefairy spawns and compared it to Dragonite spawns and found that Clefairy spawns generally in areas of higher elevation, which falls in line with my experience. Interestingly, they said that they also found that Dragonite spawns in the same areas that Clefairy spawns, although at a much lower rate. And that's interesting to me because the only time I've ever seen Dragonite is at Santa Monica Pier. And right on the beach, you're at sea level, so that's zero elevation. But if it's true, check your Clefairy spawns, camp out there for a night, see if Dragonite shows up. With the latest update, Go Plus now notifies you of Oh no, I accidentally pressed the button. What was it? I didn't catch it. I accidentally pressed the button. Um, well anyway, Go Plus now notifies you of Pokemon attracted by incense. I didn't catch it. Let's see what got away. Weedle. Alright. I'm not too worried about that. But at least I know it works. Go Plus will let you know when a Pokemon appears from your incense and from lures, as well as regular spawns. Pokemon number three, and... It's another Clefairy, so it seems like Clefairy definitely spawns up here pretty regularly. 755, that's a big Clefairy. Got it. Also, that candy that Drowsy picked up was number 50, so I finally have enough candies to evolve a Drowsy. I'm gonna switch it out. Oddish. I wanna evolve an Oddish, definitely. So there it is. I really want that Vile Plume. All right, another five minutes, we should find something. Okay, this is kind of weird. I just set Oddish as my buddy, and here's an Oddish attracted by my incense. Probably coincidence, but still kind of interesting. Look at that. I didn't even have to walk a single kilometer with my Oddish, and I just got four candies. We're here at the lake, Big Bear Lake. Super low, like 15 feet low. Look That's my this. sister, say hi. Cassie's sister's going fishing. <laughs> you want your grape? Um, okay. okay, good, because I'm eating them. Look at this so low. That used to be lakefront property. Those are docks. And the water's way down here. Don't let anyone tell you the drought is over in California. It's never over in California. We live in a desert. Turn the water off while you brush your teeth. Please. Thanks. We're gonna head into town now and see if we can find some Pokemon over there. It's a cool seat, but that bubble machine is dripping on me. I'm gonna try to leave something in this gym. Yeah, dodge. Why? I don't know. It's really annoying. Just a quick trip into town. There's actually, surprisingly, a lot of stuff going on as far as uh, gyms and Pokestops go. 
So maybe we'll try to come back down here later, but, but for now, Demi's done fishing. We're gonna go pick her up and head to the cabin. home for the weekend or for like a day really but not a whole lot going on there is a team instinct gym which I should be able to reach just walking down the street or up the street is that uphill anyway definitely gonna go train that gym up leave something there definitely Pokemon activity here at the cabin but we're gonna head back into town because we're hungry I'm Chris Nick Nick nice to meet you you too yeah come on in so it's a uh, two bedroom, two bath. Cool, oh, cool. Nice. Uh, didn't well, we just got shown this house. Lovely house. And, um, you know, it's actually right here in range of the gym. So okay. since we're here, it's kind of getting cold. We might as well. Oh no, I took too many steps. I gotta take three steps back. There's space, I'm gonna leave something, but then I'm also gonna train it up so that Cassie can leave something. With an executor at the bottom. I wanna use bug type moves. How about Butterfree? One more open space. You gonna leave something here? Back in town now to get some dinner, and of course it's Asian. We're uh, switching tables because that one's not in range of this Poke Stop, but over here, yep, we got it. We just finished eating, and we're gonna head down to the lake now because there is a crazy lure party going on down there. Really? So. Not fishing lore, sorry. <laughs> Demi's going fishing. I try to catch a fish, he's trying to catch a Pokemon. That's right. Maybe a Magikarp. Or Jatini, hopefully. All right, we're already good. There's a Jatini at this lure, so we're gonna catch that. I was trying to put my... Got it, first try, nice. Cool. It looks like most of the lures have ended, but there's still a good spot, so okay. maybe while Demi's fishing, we'll lure a couple of these and just do triple lure while we wait. Yeah. We'll Sounds good to them. me. All right, this is our spot. This is our bench. Teaching your family. Right here, triple lure. Craziness. dark now but before we head back I want to go to these two teammates that's not the I can't click the gym 
there's the gym. We're gonna go add something to both of these gyms. This one's level five, the other one's level three. So we'll train them up, drop something off. Maybe we'll run into another Dratini on the way and a Pidgeot too, that would be cool. So let's do that. Let's go drop something off at these gyms and then we'll head back to the cabin. Oh yeah. We found the Dratini and a heat source, so this is nice. Let's see if we can get this one-handed. <laughs> yep. From up here. Got it. That's the third Dratini we've seen since we've been down here by the lake. One ran away from me, but that's not bad. I'm making progress, finally. 42 candies. Let's keep going. Almost to the gym. All right, here's the first gym. And the lowest Pokemon here is a 659 CP Gyarados. So this is what I mean when it's good to keep evolved Pokemon with low CP, because you never know what you're going to need to train against. Luckily, I do have some electric Pokemon with pretty low CP. So I'll actually get to use this 322 CP Electabuzz to train this gym up right now. Why am I attacking too much? Max prestige gain with a 322 Electabuzz. The other option is to just ignore that first one and uh, choose your Pokemon based on the second. So I'm going to use my strongest electric type and see if I can get through at least two Gyaradoses, maybe three. Probably not three. They're actually pretty strong. Nine hundred thirty-seven prestige gain for that one, so it's definitely more efficient to just use that weaker Electabuzz and train against the first Gyarados. I just realized that we both could have added something after uh, at level six, but anyway, level seven. We're both gonna add something now, and there's gonna be an extra slot. All right, here's gym number two. It's cold, so we're gonna train it up quickly and drop something off. Let's go. failed because after the latest update, I've noticed if you're like spamming attacking, it'll like buffer attacks. Yeah. So like, I thought that my Pokemon was just slow. No, it's like if you press it too many times, like if you press three times quickly, yeah, it it'll will, attack three yeah. times. So yeah. you have to like press once, press once, press once. <laughs> Alright, there it is, level 5. We'll both drop something off real quick. I'm gonna leave, what's my next highest? I'll leave, actually I'll drop another Snorlax here. Yeah. What are you putting? I'm just gonna put my Gyarados. Gyarados, cool. And with that, this day is over. We're going back to the cabin. The next question is, I've noticed that almost every non-stab move is super effective against one of a Pokemon's weaknesses. So is it better to leave a non-stab Pokemon in a gym knowing it will most likely be fighting against its weaknesses. 